Hello everyone! Welcome to our new Festivities video from me, Altea, and Chiara of the Sea Watch Foundation. Today we're going to celebrate the most unsettling festivity of the year, April Fools. As you may know, April the 1st is the day when all jokes are allowed. In many cultures, the symbol of this day is the fish. It represents the person who believes the joke, and sometimes a cutout fish can be sticked on the person's back. So maybe watch out for yours. <laughs> We're gonna tell you today such unbelievable stories about marine life that you will probably think we are joking. So as a start, since today is a all about fish day, Chiara, shall we take the chance to say a couple of things about fish and about cetaceans? Yes, let's do that. So it's very easy to confuse fish and cetaceans and it's a really, really common mistake. But we're here today to make sure that this won't happen again. So the truth is that both fish and cetaceans live in the sea. They both live in the water, but they're very different. And before even going any further, what is a cetacean? A cetacean is a marine mammal and so if you think about a cetacean and then think about a dolphin, a, a whale or a porpoise. So they both live in the sea, so they live in the same environment really, but they are different on many levels. So we have decided to tell you three important things so that by the end of this video, you'll know everything you need to know about them and you won't confuse them anymore. So first of all, Let's talk about the way fish and sedations breathe. Second, let's talk about how they're born and their relation to their parents. And then let's talk about the way they move. That sounds like an awesome plan. So as a start, ooh, how do fish and sedations breathe? Okay, so uh, fish use gills. They have them right here and they're in the water where they get their oxygen and thanks to their gills, they're breathing. But cetaceans breathe in a very different way because they are mammals like we do. So they have lungs exactly like us. And so they cannot breathe on the water. They need to come up to the surface to breathe. So if you, lock, if you watch out for cetaceans while walking along the coast. All of you sea watchers out there, take a good look. Look out for a blower spout. It looks like a little kind of cloud hanging from their head, from above their heads, really. And that's a sign that a whale, a dolphin, or a porpoise was there, just about there breathing at the surface. That's such a perfect tip for our whale watcher friends. Cool. So. What about how fish and cetaceans are born and how parents take care of them? That's another interesting uh, fact. Um, so fish are born from eggs. The mothers lay their eggs. The um, eggs are etching and the tiny one are born like that. And they're quickly, very quickly independent and you know, they do their things very fast. For cetaceans is different. I think they're very much like us, once again. Um, uh, the mothers give birth to young ones and they stay with them for a while, really. And it's uh, an incredibly important time in their life, the time they spend with their mothers. Um, because during that time, uh, their mothers teach them how to speak, how to communicate with the others, how to hunt, how to swim. That sounds really familiar. So. Now we know that both fish and cetaceans live in the water so they can swim very well, but I bet they swim in different ways, don't they? They do. They both swim really well underwater for obvious reasons, but this is how you can distinguish them if you sight them out there. So if you sight the fish, that fish is going to move his tail left to right, left to right. But if there is a cetacean out there, the tail will move very differently. It won't move like that, but it will move from up and down and up and down that way. So that's how all of you 
you can distinguish them in the wild. That is fascinating. Surely it will be easier to tell whether we are looking at a fish or a cetacean now. I got something to tell you about fish too today. Something that I discovered during my travels. I want to tell you a true story that happens every year around this time of the season. A very special fish, the Pacific herring, comes to lay their eggs on the Pacific coast of North America. They lay tiny little eggs in the water, but close to the coast, on rocks and kelp leaves, so that some of them stay in the water and some of them are washed ashore. And those eggs become food for other animals, both marine and terrestrial ones. So you can observe all sorts of species coming to the coast for them. From the seagull to the eagle, to the bear and the wolf, to bigger fishes and cetaceans, and sea lions and seals. It is such an incredible gathering of creatures. And believe me, I've never seen anything more joyous than that. It's a real springtime fever. What a nice story, Althea. It really is. And it shows so well about how complex the marine ecosystem is and how many organisms kind of they work things together down there. And, you know, it's tell us as well, like how important it is really that there's going to be enough herrings um, for everyone since so many species depend on them, right? Thanks, Kara. That's just the perfect conclusion for my story. Since we know herring are so important, it's important we take, we take care of them. So just a final note. Shall we say something about what cetaceans eat? Because it's not just fish, is it? No, that's correct. They definitely eat fish, but whales also eat something else. They eat krill. It's just the word that really describe um, shrimps, very small shrimps. That's what they eat. So that's something very important. They're so teeny tiny, but they make a very huge difference in the whale's life. Well, just our little listeners today, right? Remember, little sea lovers, you're never too small to make the difference here. Well, now we're getting to the end of our video and we would like to say bye bye to you with some April foolish facts. You can use these facts to pretend you're telling jokes when you're not. <laughs> Your friends won't know what to believe anymore, but they will sure know more about marine mammals in the end. So, Kara, do you want to start? Yes, let's go with the first one. So um, imagine you are um, just about to go to school and you are um, going to school um, with your best friend. But what if your best friend is a blue whale? Well, <laughs> Taking the bus together to go to school, it would be a challenge. And you know why? And this is absolutely true. This is not, <laughs> this is no joke. Um, a blue whale calf can be as long as the entire school bus. So maybe there would not be that much space for you to fit in there. <laughs> if you go with your best friend. And so here we go. Obviously, it's nothing like an adult blue whale that is as long as three school buses together, but hey, here you go. Oh my, that's unbelievable. Kara, is it true that blue whales are the biggest animals on the planet? They are, they are the largest marine mammals on the earth, correct? That's amazing. Wow, so here we go with another one. <laughs> Little watches who are listening to us. Have you ever joined your parents for a long, maybe tiring and boring trip to the supermarket for around 45 minutes to one hour? Yeah, was it terrible? Mm. Well, it's even harder for a sperm whale. He doesn't go to the supermarket, but to find food, he has to dive for depths of over 1000 meters in the sea. And he takes 45 minutes to one hour to find a prey sometimes. And do you remember, he's a cetacean. He can't breathe underwater. So for all that time, 
he holds his breath. Isn't that unbelievable? Incredible, I would say. It's certainly incredible. <laughs> and there is something also that is very interesting and is no joke. Um, do you actually know um, how whales uh, feed on krill? How do they do it? Because they have no teeth. So what happens is that they have something very funny that hangs from up here in their mouth that looks like hair, really, but it's no hair. Um, those things are called baleen whales and they're incredibly helpful because that's where all the krill get trapped while the water leaves their mouth. So funny looking thing, looking like hair, but you know, incredibly useful. That's amazing. It, it feels weird even to imagine that, but it's so cool that it works for whales. So to conclude, here's your last April foolish fact. Imagine a mama whale telling a story to her calf and it goes like this. Once upon a time, 50 million years ago, there was your great, 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 April Fools! <laughs> That's not accurate. That's not true. This is the actual ancestor of today's cetaceans. It looked a bit like a dog, was as big as a goat, had a long tail, lived on land, and had fur. Hard to believe, right? Well, that is how evolution works. And eventually, from that creature called the Pachycetus, Cetaceans became the animals we know today. Nature is always full of surprises, isn't she? So if you want to discover more of them, stay tuned with us. We hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching us and happy April Fools. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone.